Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. Blake Cousins, along with my brother Brent, we've got some exciting news for you today with big UFO sightings, including an exclusive with Dr. Stephen Greer. We just finished up an incredible interview for approximately an hour and a half going over the new documentary, Above Top Secret, the technology behind disclosure and what Dr. Greer reveals in this impromptu Zoom interview is beyond imagination. He delves into the dark side of the cover-up and what could be done about it, including what is amazingly enough, not only having Dr. Stephen Greer, but this entire panel also joins in in this discussion. We have Michael Schratt from Blue Room Media including aviation historian Jim Goodall and John D'Souza, retired FBI agent known as the X-Men. And this discussion is off the hook and the minds and the collaborative effort of disclosure between these gentlemen are amazing. So we're gonna be uploading this entire hour and a half interview very shortly. So make sure you subscribe to Third Phase of Moon to listen to this incredible panel discussion but here's a sneak peek listen up information and assessments so that's what our job is has been although i want to be very clear so the conspiracy kooks out there don't go nuts i don't work for anyone in the government i'm not paid by anyone in the government or a corporation or anyone international or a covert program this is a completely self-funded effort the disclosure project has never um, been part of that system and nor am I even now as I share this with you now that's by design because once you get pulled in that system it's a slippery slope to end up at the bottom of you know at uh, uh, the wrong end of a, of a deal where you've lost your autonomy and your ability to be free which I guard more than anything that's our freedom um you know, and there's so many critics out there as well in regards to uh, what you've been doing all these years. But let's take another uh, quick look at an exclusive right here above Top Secret. Watch Great. this. Some years ago, I was invited to go to an underground uh, research facility in El Paso on the Mexican-American border. And this was a place where they were doing these sort of technologies that are transdimensional, but medical applications major stuff, technologies that literally, electromagnetic trans-dimensional technologies where they can, if someone had a missing limb, they can attach to the subtle body, you know, the, the mystics call astral body, but that energy, like you have phantom pain, and regrow it. Here's the issue. The same technology that gives you that would give you free energy to run your house because it's in that same, let's call it constellation of extraordinary technologies that they would want to keep secret. So there are a lot of spin-offs beyond energy propulsion in the environment that will benefit humanity once we can get the first level of this out. Because it, it, it's unbelievable how backward uh, even our medical technology is compared to what's possible. So that's also a very bit of good news. This is why I've called for um, sort of a uh, Marshall Plan for the planet for new energy in the environment that is supported and funded by individuals in an open source way and not expecting, I think it's you know silly to expect the government of the United States or any other government to get behind doing something that brings out the most disruptive technologies in the history of the human race. Let's be blunt. But it also creates a new civilization and it saves our future. So if it, this had been introduced slowly from the early 20th century, 100 years ago, to now, we'd be okay. But now we've run out of time because of what's happening to the biosphere, geopolitically, population boom. So in order to create uh, you know, enough change quickly enough, we're gonna have to do something very different, very uh, fundamentally different than what we've been doing original link below to into thin air's youtube channel but again we're looking at this and there's the earth right there in comparison to the size of the sun 
So when you look at this craft, it is Earth-sized as well. If you could imagine, if this is indeed some craft and it's Earth-sized, this is massive. I'm just trying to figure what else could this be? Could it be maybe a meteor or an asteroid passing by? Or could it be Saturn, another planet? I don't see planets leaving wakes like this, this thrust type um, propulsion left in the wake behind this craft from any kind of planet. This indeed looks like some kind of starship, Brent. Yeah, Blake, we're always looking for the answers and sometimes we might get a, a good one. Right now, we're still on the fence on what this actually is. Could it be a planet or a star, a comet debris, whatever it is, we still don't know the answer, but these are compelling uh, stills that Into Thin Air uh, came up with today. A great capture. I suggest everybody go over to his channel, subscribe, because he's got a really great channel breaking down the weather and capturing anomalies like this. Yep, good stuff here, guys. I want to get your opinions in this live premiere. What's your thoughts? Is this maybe some kind of celestial event, a planet, like Brent said, a comet? Or is this some kind of intelligence, some kind of extraterrestrial craft, or maybe it could be ours. Guys, I want to get your thoughts. Now, let's get to the next UFO video right now. Watch this, guys. Is this the infamous humanoid? Now, yo, um, yo. The fuck? What is that? Hold on. Hold on. Let me get out the car. I can't see, yo. Let me get out the car for a second. Wait. What is that? So there were some enhancements done to this video. You could hear in the eyewitnesses voice that they cannot explain what they're seeing. But when we enhance this and we could see this thing is locked solid, whatever this thing is, it's not wavering like you would think a bundle of balloons would be doing. This is remaining very static in its form. It's not undulating like you would think balloons would do. Again, Elon Musk, are you experimenting with something up there in the sky is this the jetpack man is this some kind of humanoid guys i want to get your thoughts we're not seeing any kind of undercarriage or any tether on this again if this was balloons adrift you would think that it would start to wobble via the wind and the heat dynamics again this is lock solid here brent yeah, with the stabilization going on right there really uh, gives us a better picture of what we're looking at. It seems like there's a, an event happening on the, on the tops of the mountain over the skies there. Yeah, if there's anybody that recognizes these mountain features, the jagged edges, is it familiar to you? Has anybody uh, seen these mountainous regions with their own eyes and could actually tell us this exact location again i'm just wondering could it be maybe a reflection off a, a window and somebody's maybe putting uh, some flashlights on a window and trying to create this illusion or is it actually up there off in the distance hovering above or beyond the mountain uh, hillside there now let's get to some uh, sad news in the ufo community we received a message from James C. Goodall, and he received a call from Bob Lazar earlier today informing him that their good dear friend John Lear has passed. From the news, what we've heard, John Lear passed peacefully in his sleep last night, and we are sad to hear this. We have uh, been in contact with John Lear over the decade right here at Third Phase of Moon and have had some really interesting conversations. 
And let me tell you, some of his theories or his statements are pretty wild. Obviously, everybody knows John Lear. If you've heard him speak in regards to this phenomenon, it gets pretty crazy and wild of some of his stories. I do believe John Lear has information that's been leaked to the public in a way that he has to kind of cloud it with fantasy and reality. He was a pilot for the CIA. His family is well respected in the aviation business. Why would he come out and play games? In my opinion, John Lear is privy to sensitive information and we're lucky enough to get some information out of him in a past interview in regards to his first visit with Bob Lazar. Listen up to this. And uh, one of the guys uh, who was uh, who I knew over there in uh, Southeast Asia was Greg Wilson, and I asked him where all he'd been, and he mentioned he'd been flying out of Bentwaters, which is a U.S. Air Force base in England, and uh, been flying A-10s, and I said, oh, Bentwaters, that's supposedly where the uh, saucer landed in uh, the Christmas of uh, 1980. He said, no, not supposedly, it did. He said, I didn't get to see it because I was confined to quarters, but I know the guys who did, and so I said, you mean this stuff is real? There really are saucers? He said, yeah. So that's what be, started me on the uh, the search, and I did a lot of driving around the western states because in those days, you know, we didn't have the Internet uh, and uh, ran into all kinds. It seems like everything fell into place. Everything I went to, I got uh, more information, more information. And, and then in uh, 1987, uh, a guy called, and he wanted a copy of all my stuff. And uh, I said, well... You know, I'm kind of, my wife is kind of uh, irritated all the calls I'm getting, so I've kind of discontinued everything. He said, well, if you ever get around to it, you know, I'd like a copy. If you do, uh, I'm an appraiser, and uh, I'll uh, appraise your house for, for free or for trade. And so I said, great. So he came over, and uh, the guy that was holding a, the, the measuring tape was his friend, Bob Lazar. And so... Gene Huff and I, the guy that the appraiser, are uh, talking about uh, saucers, and um, uh, Bob Lazar is rolling his eyes. He said, look, guys, he said, I worked at Los Alamos um, National Laboratories, and if it had been anything to this, I would have known. And uh, so that was the summer of um, 87, and uh, no, it was in 88. And uh, during the next three months, four months, we gave him enough information that intrigued him and he had uh, he had left the uh, the scientific uh, world, but he decided to re-enter, and he called his friend Dr. Teller, who was the uh, father of the H bomb, uh, who he knew from Los Alamos, and said, "I'd like to uh, get back to work in the scientific uh, world." And so Teller said, "Do you want to work with me here at Lawrence Livermore, Bob, or do you want to work there in Nevada?" And Bob said, "I want to work at Area 51." So. Um, after that, Bob got three technical interviews, and I guess he aced them all because the next thing I knew was on December 6th of 1988, he came to my house and he said, sat down, and he always did, you know, in the evening, and and uh, I said, what's going on? He said, I saw a disc today. I said, what? And he said, I saw a disc. And I said, theirs or ours? He said, theirs. I said, oh my God, you went to Groom Lake? He said, yep. And uh, I said, well, why don't you, uh, uh, why come over here? You know they followed you. Uh, I said, why don't you find out what's going on and then tell me uh, what, what you found out. He said, no. He said, you've taken so much jazz over all of this flying saucer stuff that I want to tell you it's true. I touched it. I was in it. And it's real. And it is extraterrestrial. So that started the whole thing with Bob Lazar. You know, I, I got a question for you. When Bob Lazar went to work at EG&G, which uh, obviously took him from McCarran Airport to Janet Airlines to Area 51, and then the bus drove him to S4, wasn't when during when he was interviewed for his job, wasn't he asked about his association with you? Yeah. And he, that was the second interview. And they said uh, the first question was, uh, do you know John Lear, and what is your opinion of him? And he said, I know John Lear, uh, but I think he sticks his nose in places where it doesn't belong. And when Bob told me that, he said, what I didn't tell them was that I also like to stick my nose into places it doesn't belong. Rest in peace, John Lear, and appreciate your work in this 
community. You've spent decades in regards to the disclosure and you've tried to get the information out. And I know some of the information you put out in the past could be mixed up with some reality and some fantasy one way or the other. John Lair has made a statement in this field and his affiliation with Bob Lazar and our good friend James C. Goodall is still continuing to this day. John Lear, rest in peace and Godspeed. Now, let's get to what's coming up here again, April 5th, 2022, above top secret, the technology behind disclosure will be available worldwide. Thanks everybody for joining us in this incredible premiere. Be safe out there. Leave us some comments and hit that thumbs up on the way out. Enjoy the trailer for Above Top Secret and make sure to pre-order the link right now. It's in the description below. Be safe. Blake Cousins along with my brother Brent. We'll see you next time. If the crash retrievals are truth, then all bets are off. It's very hard for people to get their minds around where the real power is. And it's not at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. The reality is something much more stark. They've been working on this for 60, 70, perhaps 80 years. The reason why the government is talking about these UFOs now, they're getting ready for the next level of war. Are these objects a national security concern? They're proffering a narrative of a national security threat that doesn't exist. I call them alien reproduction vehicles. They're made by private corporations somewhere on this planet. Technology from Roswell from 1947 has largely been held back from us. Portal technology, teleportation, whatever you can imagine, it's already been done. The biggest secrets are not the zero point energy and electric gravitics. It's the science of consciousness. All their communication systems are moving through the consciousness field and are thought actuated. The people of the CIA call it WSFM, weird science and frickin' magic. The transdimensional interstellar technology will benefit humanity. There has been tremendous disinformation. The media is keeping secrets with the government. These are lethal, vicious people. And I'm focused on exposing the extraordinary technologies that they would want to keep secret. No aspect of life on Earth will be unaffected by it.